I just want to say I was the guy farthest from where I'm at right now. So like I wasn't brought up in a church. I wasn't raised in a church. None of my families are members. So for me to actually like give it a shot, understand it, feel it for myself, it really, it hit me like really hard. Like, wait, what's going, what's happening? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I never felt this way before. Make no mistake about it. You were born to be a true millennial. Welcome to True Millennial. I'm Parker Walbeck, and today I have with me John Q. And wanted to tell a little bit about his story of how he uh, wasn't a member of the church, converted about five years ago, correct? Yeah, yep. And he's a dad of two. He's married, mm -hmm. um, also recently got sealed in the temple, and started out not so sure about the church. In fact, kind of making fun yeah. of it. <laughs> Didn't really buy into the Book of Mormon, and eventually gave it a shot. So. John, we just wanted to hear your story, yeah. hear about your background and how that conversion process kind of happened. Well, yeah, I was born and raised in Hawaii. Um, I just remember my uh, one very specific friend who was the pastor's son. He would always tell me because uh, about like the LDS church and yeah. all the like the usual stuff, man. Like, you know, I mean, Polygamy. do we have to do we have to get into it? But it's like, yeah, like how many wives you got or like whatever it was uh -huh. just always like an endless amount of nonsense but so i always had that in my mind um and then when we when we moved uh, you know eventually graduated high school i stopped going to church um and we moved to las vegas i moved to las vegas for uh, for a job um met my wife who was i was djing in the clubs and like djing and all all the time and that's how i pretty much met her at like a club yeah <laughs> so um Come to find out, she was an LDS, was an LDS girl. She, so she wasn't active at the she time. She wasn't active. She stopped going to church when she was like 12 years old and wanted to, you know, hang out with her friends and do right. all those things. So when I met her, she was inactive, but I remember like her talking about the church. She would always say little things like, oh, I remember, you know, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be like a full out like conversation, but it would just be like very subtle, like. I remember when we would do young women's or we would go to camp or girls camp and she would always talk about it. And then she would talk about like the temple and all that. Yeah. And I remember whenever she would say stuff like that, I would kind of like just dismiss it. Like, well, too bad. Like I'm not ever yeah. going to be, <laughs> I'm never ever going to be LDS or go to Mormon church or none of that. Because in the back of my mind, I always had that, you know, like that thought of what I, I thought it was mm. like, you know, they they would my buddy would always tell me in school, like, oh, at the you know, in the LDS church, they like degrade women, women are beneath them and was this buddy how how was his knowledge? How did he know I anything know. about the church? I don't know. He would always just have the facts, I guess. And I kind of yeah. looked up to him because the facts. Yeah, because <laughs> he like was the pastor's son, you know? So um he would tell stories of like how like in the LDS church, like women are beneath the men and and um, you know, there's you know, the multiple wives. There's like all, the, it would get crazy, dude. Like the stories he would say, but I being so naive, I just believed them. Like, oh, okay. So whenever I would talk to my wife about it, I would always like say, hey, like, well, if your church is so good, like why does the men go to their own class and why do the women go to their own class? And yeah. she would be like, well, that was like, knowing now what I know is elders quorum and relief yeah. society. Like, Okay, that's Just there's nothing classes. big about that. Yeah. <laughs> but like for my friend, he would make it seem like they were segregation, segregation. Like yeah. oh, the women can't know what the men know. Secrets, yeah. the secrets. But looking <laughs> back at it now, and like actually like studying it and and knowing for myself what it is, it's like the women are so high up there. I feel I find it's like so funny um, because I don't really I don't know if I'm jumping around. No, but you're good. That just come as thoughts come to my yeah. mind. Um, so I never had like a really good relationship with my mom. Like she, I mean, I don't want to put her down or anything, but she kind of like left us high and dry when I was little. So um, I always had that like resentment towards women um, to her. Like, I just thought like, oh, to me, a, a girl was like, oh, they're there until something better came along and mm -hmm. then they're out of here. Like, you don't matter or, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I'm just going to wait until the better dude comes along or whatever. That's the it, culture you grew up in. I've just felt that because yeah. that's what I was taught as a kid, right? Um, and I just find it so funny. Like, looking back now, it's like I had uh, my daughter. Um, and then I feel like at that moment, she it like softened my soul to like, you know. And looking back, 
at at like the whole timeline of events that happened in my life, there were sister missionaries that came to my home, which in the past there were bro- like there were the elders that would come over and my you know because my wife's like yeah. listed on they know where we live uh-huh. <laughs> and it was so easy for me to dismiss them yeah because they would come to our door like ah eh, whatever dude like get out of here or like close the garage door on yeah. them like everybody be quiet <laughs> but I feel like when the sisters came I it was that soft spot in my heart yeah. that I couldn't like. Just shut them I out, couldn't yeah. shut them out. And like, even when we were getting into the church, like a lot of things that were like happening in, like it was all with women. My point is like, God was showing me like, Hey, not all women are bad. And you learned that through the church. And I learned it through the church. <laughs> like, Sister Ironically, mission. since Ironically. you were told that women were degraded in the yeah, church. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which was so weird because <laughs> ev- looking back at it, every single thing that happened was like a woman was the, the, the one showering me with love. Like when we, you know, had a miscarriage back in the day and, um, you know, things were happening at my job and, you know, it felt like um, our lives were spiraling out of control and the Relief Society showed up at our house and was like offering us meals. And I was like, what is this? Like, did I, I even asked my wife, like, <laughs> did you sign up for some kind of, like, is this going to cost? Are we cost- subscribed? <laughs> what are, are we, we subscribed, subscribed to? <laughs> yeah. Like, is this going to cost us money? Like, I don't understand. She's like, no, this, they just want to do this. Like, they just want to bring, <laughs> like, and I'm like, I couldn't understand it because there was nothing that I could do for these people. Yeah. And they were like showering me a perfect stranger. They didn't know who I was. Yeah. Like, <laughs> so it was just kind of, it was funny to like, look back at that and think like, the amount of detail that like, you know, like I know people say all the time, it's like a little cliche, but God's in the details. Mm. And you look back, back at it and it's like, if he didn't do it just like that, I don't think I would be where I'm at now. Yeah. You know, does that make sense? Mm-hmm. And yeah, I just find that so funny and so interesting that it happened like that. <laughs> That's awesome. No, it's yeah. a great testimony to the amazing women in the church and mm-hmm. the pro, you know, interestingly, the, the Relief Society, I just heard this statistic. I think it's the oldest women organization mm. in the country, mm. maybe even the world. Mm. But, you know, it's we're often looked at as degrading to women when yeah. we're making up these ideas. Yeah. yeah. But actually we are one of the most women empowering organizations yeah. that go back as far as any other yeah. women organization in the in the US. <laughs> yeah. And when I realized that I was blown away. I was like, wow, this whole time I was holding that in my heart thinking yeah. It's like, what does the devil do? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you, they, they say like, oh, you're constantly like lying to you or putting these thoughts into your mind. And it's so true. He'll like put something in your head and let it sit there for 15 years <laughs> until you like actually pick up the book and look in it and find it for yourself. You know? So what do you think was the cause root of that 15 year misconception? Was it just you being unwilling yeah. to uh, basically staying in ignorance and yeah. being unwilling to know something for yourself and just taking the words of other people? I think, I think it was because for the longest time, I, I, I like solely re, um, relied on trusting only in myself. Hmm. Like I thought I knew all the answers, you know, I was in like a position where like, I was on the radio and I thought I was like Mr. Big Shot. And you know what I mean? Like I just thought I knew everything. And I think it took everything to get like torn away, basically for me to like be humbled, you know? It's kind of like those, I don't know. The best way I describe it is like um, somebody that is in the gym, right? They want to gain weight. I mean, they want to gain muscle. muscle. So what do they do? They sit on the bench. They work out. They're ripping away their muscle. Mm -hmm. To be, you know, grow to, back to grow back bigger. Um, a rose bush, you know, you got to trim it in order for it to bloom, in order for it to look beautiful. So I feel like once I like decided to like, hey, I'm going to try to put my trust in something else besides myself. And I started to like actually seek out the information instead of relying on others to provide it to me. Then that's when I started to like get softened, I think. Mm-hmm. And that's when things started to change. So tell me that story. So you you meet your wife. Mm-hmm. Was this in Hawaii? No, we met in Vegas. So you're already in Vegas now yeah. by this time. How old are you when you meet her? I'm the worst at time. <laughs> oh, man. Teenage years. We're High 2008. School. 2008. Okay. I was, so you're pretty young. Yeah. 2008. Um, so you start dating. We start dating. Uh, but during, Very rocky. But during all of courtship, Mm. nothing about the church right nothing about the church i mean she would but you made it clear 
I don't want anything to do with this church. I don't want to be a, you. A, you will never, ever, ever see me in the. Te- if you want a guy that is going to be sealed in the temple to you, <laughs> then go by all means find them. And her family hated me. Like I remember, was, was her family active at this time? Yes, her family. Okay, was active. but very she was, active. But she was inactive. She was inactive. Okay. Like so, like her dad, her mom, her brothers. You know, uh, sis, my sister in law, which has like been. Very like she played a very big role in me converting. Um, yeah, they were all active. Uh, she wasn't. Um, and yeah, I would always tell her, like, I'm not ever, you're never gonna see me in a temple, you're never gonna see me in a church. I don't believe it. Blah blah blah. I know all the facts, I know everything. You guys have millions of wives and blah. <laughs> yeah, it was just like those all the, the very naive stuff, but so you get married. Mm-hmm. And she's on board with, yeah, we don't have to have anything to do with yeah, this church. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we did, there was a time where we broke up and she tells me the story now, like we, you know, cause it was very, back then we we're young and I was like yeah. in the clubs and all that yeah. kind of stuff, bad stuff. Um, so we were like on and like, we would break up from that time to time. And I remember she told me a story where like, she tried to go to the singles ward and she like walked in and she was like, uh uh-uh, uh, I can't do this. And like walked out, I guess. <laughs> she attempted for a minute. She was like, I walked in there and they were all dressed like pilgrims. <laughs> I don't know if that's so bad to put in this, but she was like, they all look like pilgrims. And I was like, I can't do it. And she was like, I just missed you. I just missed, well, you know, when she's telling yeah, her yeah, friends, yeah. Like, I, mean, I just missed John. And I was like, she would pray, I guess, about it. Like, oh, I wanted to just find a way or soften his heart or whatever. And, uh, <laughs> but yeah, so I guess she did try to do that, but God had other plans, I guess, you yeah. know, it was just meant to. Timing wasn't quite ready. Timing wasn't right, you know? Um, Yeah. She would talk about it a lot. And um, I don't know. My sister-in-law would come over to our house because all of her family was like, you got to leave this dude. Like, (laughs) he's a loser. Like, you know what I mean? Like, (laughs) because they envisioned her going to the temple, being sealed. Even her father was like, you know, like, you have to be married to a guy that believes what we believe. In fact, I remember when I asked her father, like, hey, like, (laughs) I'm thinking about asking Nori to marry me. He said, why? And I'm like, (laughs) "Mm, because I love her? Not good enough. I'm like, oh. And he asked me about, like, what do you, like, what is your faith like? Or who do you, you know? So I know for a long time, they kind of like, it was kind of like, well, we have to accept it. Like, that she's not going to change her mind on him. So, um, so they eventually supported. They you. eventually yeah. supported us. They still like would do things like her. You know, my sister in law. She would drop off like Book of Mormons, like in my like. They were like, "Hey, we're going to pick up something from your house. We're not home." They're like, <laughs> "Leave a Book of Mormon." Like all the, like I have like probably ten <laughs> Book of Mormons. Did I, you like those gifts? I was like, no, no, I hated it. <laughs> I was like, I would get so mad, dude. I would cuss and swear at my wife like what do they what who do you think i am like throwing it on the ground and it's it's funny to look back at it now because i still have that first one she gave me really? and it, yeah she wrote in it and all that and the day we got sealed uh she was there and i like gave it to her and i was like hey remember this and that's she started awesome. crying it was like that's really cool it was really cool but um so you never gave it a chance you just would throw it on the it, ground <laughs> i never i never gave it a chance until like i don't know what it was but something turned in me i think it was like things started to fall apart and and it it was like i was forced to like humble myself you know and i was like well i got to a point where i felt like it was all gone like nothing was happening in my life it was just like i have nothing else like to you know what i mean Mm. um so instead of turning to like alcohol or whatever i was like let me just try this like let's see like what do i have to lose like you know no one's here i'm and if it's, you know, and if it's, um, if it's the time, maybe I could prove that all of this is wrong. Like, so you initially began reading the Book of Mormon, hoping to disprove it. Yeah. I was like, I'm going to take this and I'm going to prove that it's wrong. Yeah. Like, I'm going to prove to them once and for all that this thing is, is false and whatever. But at the same time, I was at that point where I was like vulnerable, I guess you could say, you know? So it was kind of like half and half and I yeah. started to read it and as I got deeper into it, I was like, wait a minute. Started comparing it to my Bible. And I was like, wait a minute. Like things are aligning, you know, or like things that were mentioned in in the Book of Mormon were also mentioned in the Bible, but I didn't really 
put them together. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I can't even like remember the exact verses, but it was things where there would be nights where it was like two o'clock in the morning. I'm downstairs in the <sighs> kitchen table. My wife's sleeping, the kids sleeping. I'm like trying to figure out like, okay, wait a minute. Something's like, it's weird, you know? Yeah. Um, so I get, because you grew up Catholic. So I grew you, up Catholic. So yeah. you had a Bible and you, a Bible. did you read it much? Uh, a little bit. A little bit. Yeah. Yeah. But I, yeah, so I, a little bit and I had that Bible. Yeah. So what was interesting is when I would read the Book of Mormon, I would compare it to my Bible, yeah. not the Joseph's right, right. translation. I okay. wanted, let's see if it's in the real Bible. Yeah, yeah. And it was like, um, I remember stumbling across like the male Kesnick priesthood. And that was like one thing that I was like, wait a minute. How come it's in both of these? Yeah. So it was like little things like that that kind of like sparked my interest. Mm -hmm. uh, so in, you know, instead of like dismantling the whole church, I ended up <laughs> joining. <laughs> but so it, tell me about that process. So yeah. you you spend a few nights yeah. in the scriptures, looking at both, yeah. comparing. This was like months. Months. Yeah. So you spend months diving into both Book of Mormon and the Bible. Did you read through the whole Book of Mormon? At what point did you say this is true? It was. You know what's funny is that I didn't even get through the whole thing before I knew it was true. Like, and this is just for me. Like, yeah, yeah. You know, I'm not trying to say like, hey, watch Everyone's this. process is different. They're going to sure. process it different. And like, for me, it just clicked. Like, and I don't even think it was just like an aha moment. It was the way that I was like starting to feel. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And like the, the, the things that were happening around me. It was almost like by me diving into that, it started to like open doors that I never knew existed, if that makes sense. Can you give an example? Well, for one, it was all like the like the showering of love that was happening. Yeah. Like it 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 kind of was like a perfect timing type of situation where like for a long time we were like lost, I feel, right? And you know, the I've I've still believed in God. Like my Belief in God never changed ever since I was a kid till now. I think it just, I don't even know what the word is, but it kind of like shifted, I guess. Mm -hmm. I, he, I knew, I always knew that God was real. Like there was never a time when I didn't think he was. Um, but as far as like thinking that he was gone from my life because I was so bad, I think that's what was mm -hmm. in my mind. Like, okay, he's like left me, you know? Yeah. So I think once I started to investigate and started to uh, dig into it, um, he kind of like showed me that like, no, I'm here. You know, I remember this time before we got baptized, um, our ring doorbell rang and we weren't home and it was a girl standing at our door and she had a balloon. And I was like, this is so weird. I asked my wife, like, who is this girl? And she's like, I have no idea. We rush home, get to the door, the balloons floating there on the balloon. It was like for my wife's birthday. It's like, happy birthday from Madison. Madison was one of the members of the church. Um, mm -hmm. And I was like, wow, that's so nice. Like she doesn't even really know us. And she just came over to drop off a balloon. And she was like, yeah, that's kind of like, you know, basically they're just showering us with love at that point, I guess you could say. Um, so Jory reaches out to Madison. Hey, Madison, she invites her to church. Um, like the Relief Society sisters would come over. They would bring us, you know, Food or just be there for us. Um, just a bunch of stuff that just yeah. kind of like would happen, you know? And so what point did you decide, okay, this there's something to this book. What's What was the process going from there, this feels true to joining the church, taking missionary discussions? I think as I started to read it and I started to, it was more so like the feelings that I would have. I've, I felt like, more at peace and more, it kind of felt like that feeling that, that you know what I mean? Like for the longest yeah. time I was filling a void, I felt like with mm -hmm. random stuff, you know, whether it be like partying or whatever, whatever. Um, and that reading the book, it was kind of like getting me closer to God, like the message from God, but it was like from a different perspective, I guess you could say, right? Mm -hmm. I believe there's a, a power in the Book of Mormon because I felt it myself. Mm -hmm. I, I talked about this last week, actually, in one of my videos where I haven't been reading the Book of Mormon very much lately because we've been studying the New Testament as a yeah. church. And, and then I stumbled across a quote from President Nelson that said, read the Book of Mormon every day and it will help you make better choices every day. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I, sh I need to read this more. And so 
on top of studies with the New Testament. I just started reading the Book of Mormon a couple of chapters every day. Yeah. And there's just a different spirit in it. Like mm. you're you're saying right here. Yeah. That it you can just feel the spirit of God. It's the pure word of God that mm. was translated by a prophet of God yeah. revealed to yeah. man. And you can feel that. You can feel the presence of God when you read it. And so yeah. that's why you just being open enough. Mm. And there's a difference between reading it, looking for uh, disproving it, but you were also doing it in a place, like you said, of vulnerability where mm. you were trying to fill a void. And yeah. anyone who approaches the Book of Mormon with that kind of vulnerability, mm. wanting to believe, wanting something more, wanting to seek God, yeah. I just think the Book of Mormon, the power of it that the Spirit brings mm. is going to be overwhelming to the point where it's going to be hard to deny yeah. <laughs> like you've expressed. Yes. You know? Yeah, for sure. For sure. And it's definitely... I think for me, it felt it felt different. I mean, I know people, you know, sometimes say, oh, what is the feeling? Explain yeah, the yeah. feeling. And I used to be that person. Mm -hmm. Like, what feeling? Yeah. Oh, you can feel jittery inside. Uh -huh. Like, but it's hard to explain. You because can't really we, describe it. You can't describe it. <laughs> and honestly, if you think like, I just want to say, I was the guy farthest from where I'm at right now. So like I wasn't brought up in a church. I wasn't raised in a church. None of my families are members. Like, so for me to actually like give it a shot, understand it, feel it for myself, it really, it hit me like really hard. Like, wait, what's going, what's happening? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I never felt this way before. Like in any other, you know, environment, like I went to church and did this, I've read the Bible. I didn't feel the same that I feel now. Mm. Right. And I think you you hit it on the head with what the key is, is just humility, like mm. being willing to let down your own pride and say, maybe I don't know everything. Yeah. Maybe what the pastor's son told me all those years, maybe it's not true. Maybe yeah. I should find out for myself and be yeah. open to it but potentially. Yeah. To me, that's the biggest difference is, are you even open to it being true? If God struck you with lightning today and told you, the LDS church is the true church, mm. would you be willing to follow that? Because if the answer is no, if the answer is, well, I, I just don't want to live their commandments and do the word of wisdom thing and pay yeah. tithing, and then he's never going to give you the answer. Yeah. Like you had to get to a point where you were willing to act upon an answer if it was given, yeah. change something in your life. And once you made that shift in your heart, God was able to enter. Yep, exactly. And then he also, well, you know, God, I, I always say like God has a funny way of working. Like he'll do things based on every individual. Like I always think to myself, like at night when I'm like laying in bed, like how does God have the time to know every single person? <laughs> because I swear some of the things that happen in my life, I'm like, there is like, there is somebody up there like <laughs> targeting me. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like <laughs> I'm talking like the best Amazon, like ads that like come up <laughs> on your phone. Like someone is like, okay, John wants to do it like this, and this is how we're going to do it. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, <laughs> it's just it's just funny how it works like that, man. So you read the Book of Mormon, you gain somewhat of a testimony of the book, and then when do you start taking missionary discussions? Because at um, this time, you're still hiding from them. I'm still hiding from my <laughs> wife. She doesn't really know, like, what's going on. Um, one night, we're, in, we're in, our, in our house, and I'm like, hey, have you ever, like, thought about maybe going back to church, you know? And she's like, I think about it all the time. And as I'm telling her, like, you know, well, rewind that. The missionaries would always come to our house yeah. and they would always knock on the door and like, we would hide and like, no, like everybody get down, like turn off the lights and <laughs> pretend that we're not home. And dude, there's been so many times where like, I pull up in the driveway and like, I see them like standing there and like, close, like I pull my car and close the garage while my car is still on. I'm like, oh, looking back at it now, I'm like, oh my gosh, those girls had like so much patience, dude. <laughs> um, but as I was, um, as I was telling my wife that like, hey, would you be interested in going back, you know, to church? Have you ever thought about it? Because I'm, you know, maybe want to take the discussions. Well, actually, I didn't even say that. I was, I said... Um, I didn't even say discussion. I didn't know that you had to do that. Yeah. I said, I'm thinking about getting baptized. Hmm. And she was like, like, whoa. Like, this is a guy that like went from like not even wanting to have anything to do with it to like wanting to get baptized. Because I didn't know that you had to like take the yeah. missionary discussions and you had to. And she didn't know you were reading the Book of Mormon. She didn't know. So like, just I, one day you said, I want to get baptized yeah, in the church. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, I was thinking about like, yeah, are you interested in going to church? Because I'm thinking about getting baptized. And she was like, 
her face was like, <laughs> what? I come to find out, as at the same time I was telling her that, she was texting the missionaries. While I was telling her that, she was like, uh-huh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> she was telling him, come over to my right house away. tomorrow before, before John changes his mind. <laughs> the next day, they came over. They knocked on the door. I opened it. I let them in, and they were like, Blown away. Hey, hello, Mr. Q, you yeah. know. So we started to do the discussions. And actually, um, our bishop at the time, Jory, told him, like, my husband wants to get baptized. And he was like, well, 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 hold on. We got to get the discussions. Yeah. We got to, we got to, you know, there's things that have to happen yeah. <laughs> before that can happen. So I think for me, it was just, I don't know. If you know, you know. Like, I'm the type of person, like, if I'm going to do something, it's going to be 100%. I'm not going to, like be half in and half out, you know? Mm -hmm. So, so you get baptized shortly thereafter. Yeah. And a year later you get sealed, correct? Yeah. Sealed. Yeah. And you had two kids at this time. So they were able to join you. Yep. Tell me about that experience. That was a a really cool experience to, um, to be in the, in the temple. Um, what was really, really cool was my father-in-law. He was like, this was, you know, he's passed now, but at the time he was sick. So my, you know, wife was like, hey, we're going to get sealed. Like, can you come? And he was like, I, if you have to roll me in there, I will be there. Yeah. And he came all the way from Fresno and he was like so happy. And he was like, I never thought I would see a daughter like get sealed because none of her sisters are um, active in, in the church. Uh-huh. So it's like he, he was very happy and yeah. um, that made me very happy. But it was a really cool experience to see. My kid, like when we did the ceiling thing and the kids came in, it was just like all tears in the whole room. And um, yeah, it was a really cool experience for sure. That's amazing. So what would you tell somebody, what would you tell yourself 10 years ago, 15 years ago, little John in Mm -hmm. Hawaii, who's being bombarded with anti-Mormon rhetoric, how the Book of Mormon's evil and the LDS church is this and that. What would you tell that little John or those, Mm -hmm. you know, millions of people out there who have those misconceptions, prejudgments of what the church is and what the Book of Mormon is, who are growing up in a Christian faith and being told by their pastors, do not read that Book of Mormon, it's evil. What do you tell them? I tell them to just, well... I say this to the young men all the time, like in our church, and and I say this to my wife. If I could go back, like way back, I would tell myself to give it a shot, like be open to it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, I just look. I don't know if this is gonna make sense, but I and I know it's bad for like a person to like have regret and like because every everybody is at their point of life now that yeah they're meant to be there. Mm-hmm. But I look back at it and I'm like, man, if I could. You look at like a like a like a man that went to church, right? He went to college, he served a mission, right? He served a mission, went to college, he's focused, he's got a good job, he's supporting his family, he's built his foundation on rock, mm-hmm. right? I feel like for the longest time I felt like my foundation was built on sand. You know how the this yep. primary song goes, mm-hmm. right? So I, I always think about that, like till this day. And it always, always gets me. Like if I could just go back and like redo things, I would do it this way. But what's great is I'm grateful for where I'm at now because I've learned so much and I can apply those things, you know, to my son or yeah. to some of the young young men that, you know, um, in our church or whatever. And I just feel like that's a very good thing. I, get, I, I say that... Uh, God's secret weapon is like a convert, right? Mm-hmm. Because that person has seen both sides. Yeah. That person has been there. That person knows, right? And that person has chosen the gospel. Mm-hmm. Like It wasn't spoon-fed to them growing sp- up. They had to yeah. break out of an existing preconception and choose yeah. it. Yeah. And I feel like, I mean, it's nothing bad with being spoon-fed. Because if I look back, I'm like, I wish my parents took me to... Well, there's pros and, there's pros and cons <laughs> yeah, to it, right? Yeah. Like you get to enjoy the blessings of it growing up, yep. but you don't get to see the other side of it. And yeah. so you don't, maybe don't have the same conviction that you would have had you had that stark contrast, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then there's always that thought of what if, what, mm-hmm. what is it like on the other side or whatever? Yep. And a lot of members do that. A lot yeah. of members of the church 
because they grew up in the church, mm -hmm. they resent the fact that, well, I never knew what it was like to be in the world and to yep. be able to drink and party and whatever. Yep. Yep. And so they go and try it out. And some of them stay in it and some go for a while and realize, yeah, it actually wasn't worth it. And I mm. like my church life yeah. better. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, if I could go back and I would do it totally different, but at the same time, I wouldn't. Because if I did, yeah. I wouldn't have met my wife. I wouldn't have had my kids. I wouldn't have been, you know, in this position now that I am now. So yeah, now you're able to share the gospel from, I mean, that's why I have you on here mm -hmm. is because you have a, a very specific and unique story about um, not having it and now having it in that mm -hmm. process. And like you said, I think uh, converts are the secret weapon of the Lord because yeah. he can, he can utilize you in a way that he can't utilize me. I mean, I have my own conversion story and I have my own upbringing and I can relate to other people in similar scenarios, but yeah. Anyone who isn't part of the church, they can relate better with you yeah. because you can say, look, I've, I've been where you're at. I've yeah. experienced that lifestyle. And I'm telling you, because I made these decisions and was willing to humble myself and break down that wall of pride that I yep. knew everything, yep. I was able to find this, this, and this, and yep. my life is more blessed because of it. And yep. so I invite you to try it out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> You know, like you said, yeah. you have nothing to lose. Like yeah. if it ends up feeling evil to you, then great, stick yeah. with what you got. But yeah. Why wouldn't you explore mm. what we claim to be another testament of Jesus Christ mm. if you believe in Jesus Christ? Mm. Exactly. And that was that's what I was stuck on for the longest time. Like, oh, this can't just another testament of Jesus Christ. No, the Bible is the only, you know. But people think like that, but have no problem looking at Facebook where like, hey, a train gets derailed and you have 50 million people sharing their their input on that trail derailment. Well, uh -huh. what is the Bible? A Bi the Bible is yeah. a collection of stories based on different people's point of view. Mm -hmm. Same with the Book of Mormon. It's a collection of books yep. that are telling you about Jesus Christ mm -hmm. from their perspective. Right. Same thing with what we do now. Like you see a, a car crash, you're going to get on, oh, wow, I saw a car crash. The other person across the street is going to, wow, the car was speeding. The other person's like, no, he wasn't. He was, it's just like all different perspectives, right? Of yep. the same thing that's happening. Well, I always ask people who refuse to read the Book of Mormon, do you believe that there were people that lived in the Americas in that time period? And like, yeah, well, we have evidence, historical evidence that people lived here, mm -hmm. the Mayans and so forth. It's like, so you think that they, the God didn't call prophets for them and communicate with them, that he just left anyone who didn't live in Jerusalem yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. was unable to have any knowledge. If if Paul couldn't reach him in his boat, yeah, yeah. they didn't get to learn about Jesus. Yeah. Like now we have the internet and we have the ability to communicate worldwide, but then yeah. you don't think it's possible. Yeah. You don't think God had the ability mm -hmm. to call prophets in other yeah. nations and other parts of the world. And if he did, wouldn't they also write about it? Mm -hmm. Exactly. You know, and exactly. so to me, it's just, I think it's pretty common sense mm -hmm. to think that there would be other testaments. And yeah. not only am I open to the Bible and the Book of Mormon, I'm open to and excited for new scripture to be revealed mm -hmm. from other nations that someday oh, yeah. are uncovered about, oh, well, you know, in this part of the land and that part of the land yep. and in this time period, they wrote about their revelations and prophecies about Jesus Christ as well. Like, I'm excited for that instead of, you know, like a Pharisee when Christ came, mm -hmm. which was like, no, we have the Bible. Yeah. We're good, yeah. Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, well... <laughs> Nobody yeah. else can say, yeah. share their stories. Just, right. well, just one version. Moses came <laughs> and he taught us the gospel. So we're yeah. good now. Yeah. And then Jesus came and said, well, I'm here to tell you more. Mm, no, no, no. We yeah. have our word. Yeah. We have our Bible. Yeah. It's like, how different are we today if we do the exact same thing? And we're, un we're unwilling to accept any more word of God because he's already given us yeah. some words. Yeah. It's like we, we believe in a, in a living God mm. who calls living prophets who gives his word ongoing because he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Yeah. I think I learn in a different way, right? Like some people, they watch, they they read or whatever. For me, it's like experience. Mm -hmm. That's how I kind of like learn. So like if I'm going to pick up something new, I'm going to actually do it, right? To learn. Um, so there's there's been so many things that have happened in real time that it's hard for me to believe that there isn't a God. If that makes mm -hmm. sense, you know? Um, you want me, I could share a story. Yeah. Okay. So, so I have um, these two, um, these two friends, a uh, husband and wife. And for the longest time, 
um, they were like struggling with infidelity. Like they never, um, you know, they were trying, uh, did I say infidelity? Infertility. Infertility. Sorry. Infertility. So they were having a hard time getting a baby. Um, they did the whole process. IV, what is it called? IVF. IVF, mm -hmm. IVF and all that. Um, one day, one night we were in Fresno. We were staying with my, um, my brother's, um, my brother's family out in Fresno and I was laying in the, in bed. It was like morning. Um, you know, it was more early morning, mm -hmm. 6am or whatever. And I was just thinking in my head, like praying. And I do that often, like just kind of pray and say little prayers or whatever. And, um, I heard this very, like this voice that basically said to me, like, um, I can make any, anybody into anything I want. That's what it said. Um, and I'm probably sounding crazy right now, but no. yeah. So I heard that was in my head and I kept playing and playing and playing over and over and again. And I was like, what does it mean? Right. Um, but at the same time, I was very concerned for my friends. Like we would pray for them. We would, you know, go over and visit them and stuff like that. So when we got back to Vegas, I called my friend and I was like, Hey, uh, sounds crazy, but can I come over? And she said, yeah. Yeah. Come on over. So we, I went over. It was just me. Got to their house. Set up prayer in a car. And I was like, hey, like, tell me why I'm here. Like, I know I'm supposed to be here. Like, you got to help me. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. so went in and um, I gave them, like, a blessing, right? And keep in mind, they were, like, having trouble, like, five years, yeah. six years with fidelity. Um, gave them a blessing. And it was the craziest experience like ever um while i was giving them a blessing um yeah i got reminded of this when i was little my mom told me this story that of a dream that she had mm -hmm. in the dream she was walking um with an angel and this i was like six or seven right and she was walking me to elementary school she told me about this dream in the dream there was an angel they were walking through these these hallways and the walls were white, the floors were white, everything was white, right? And there were shelves in the hallways. In the shelves, there were like these little boxes. In the boxes, there were parts. There was like arms and legs and, and you know, hands and feet, whatever. It wasn't gross. It was just like perfectly organized. So she asked the angel, like, what are these boxes? And he said, those are gifts. Those are blessings for those that believe. All they have to do is believe. So she told me about that dream and I always like, hmm. I thought it was like nuts. Like I was like, dude, like. <laughs> What's wrong with this woman? <laughs> What's wrong with my mom? Like she's crazy. Um, but she always had that like, she was always kind of like spiritual yeah. when we were young. But like my mom drank and she did, but she was like very like into God. Like she hmm. read the Bible and she knew all these stories and she would tell me all of these stories. Um, but, you know, at the same time, she was kind of struggling with her own demons, I guess you could yeah. say. And I, looking back at it now, I'm like, I understand why she was struggling with those demons because, you know, the adversary is trying to prevent her from reaching yeah. the level. So fast forward to, to, uh, to the time I was at my friend's house and I was going to give them the blessing. Close my, and keep in mind, like I'm really new. I was really new to giving, I didn't yeah. really, I didn't know any of that. So mm -hmm. I was just like, I went for it. Like, I was just like, felt the spirit, went for it, right? And um, closed my eyes. And the first thing that came to my mind was that dream that my mom told me when I was a little kid. Mm -hmm. And I just felt like this cool, like, just this tingling, like, from my toes just went whoop, all the way to my head. And then I saw in their house a little girl and a little boy. And their house was completely, like, messy. Like it was just like, they're keep in mind they didn't have kids, so their house was yeah. like pristine condition. You know, like mm -hmm. you go to your friend's house, they don't have kids. You're like, oh yeah, yeah <laughs> this would be destroyed in like five seconds if my <laughs> if I invited my kids over. Here. Um, but it wasn't like that. When I looked around, it was like, oh, just a mess. And there was a boy, and there was a girl, and they were playing. So I gave the blessing, and I was like, everything's gonna work. Like if you just give the glory to God, He will take care of everything else. Like just. That's all you have to do, really, in our whole life. It's like when people people need to realize that when you stop trusting yourself and start trusting in the Lord, things will start to change for you. 
Mm-hmm. And I know that might sound crazy to a non-believer. And trust me, I was there. I was a non, like, I was there. I know what you're feeling. Like, I was the same way. I was like, eh, whatever, dude. You know? But once I realized that, it literally changed, like, my whole life. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I gave them the blessing. I saw that. They were crying. I was crying. I left the house. They had, um, the next day, they went to the doctor. Um and you know did the whole procedure or whatever and now she has a baby she's a girl and just seeing the baby and holding the baby it like the feeling that i had was like wow like that was the moment i like looked at the baby and was like god is like a real living person like he's real like yeah. how can you know what i mean like how mm-hmm. can someone deny God is what I was I was thinking, you know, mm-hmm. and things like that would happen like all the time, like just little things like that. Like, I mean, I have so many stories, actually. If you look back at my life and look at all the forks in the road, like I can look back and remember the time when I encountered like missionaries. Right. And they would whether it was when I was single or whatever, they would knock on my door or like I would see them in my apartment complex and I'd kind of like ah I dismiss them but they were always there it was like God was like just tugging 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 and was like let me know when you're ready and I think that's the big like misconception right now is people think that they have to be perfect in order for God to like bless them or like be there for them but you don't like everyone every day is being converted right mm-hmm. like even members that have been in the church forever being converted every single day, right? They're falling in love with the gospel every single day. God reveals more and more as you start to dig and, you know, it becomes more true to you. Right. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah. Um, any, any last, uh, thoughts or invitations or that you want to share with anyone hearing your story? So lately I've been like really about, um, the book of Matthew, I'll read like something and then I'll try to like do the backstory of the person. So like, okay, let's see um, um, who was Matthew? Like, yeah. why was he? According to The Chosen, he's on the spectrum autistic. Have yeah. you seen The Chosen? <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> didn't. He's the best character on The Chosen. I haven't seen you that. You need to watch The Chosen. Okay. It's so okay. good. Anyway, Matthew, the the character they build out of Matthew is he's on the spectrum, kind of autistic. Mm. So he's like the one documenting everything and yeah. very, you know, precise with with writing everything down yeah. and and uh, it just there's some really cool scenes with showing this idea of Matthew and how he yeah. was such an integral part of bringing us what we have now in yeah. the gospel. Yeah. Anyway, keep going. Wasn't Sorry. he? So was Matt? Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, so Matthew was like a tax collector. Right? Yeah. So mm-hmm. he worked for the Roman Empire. Or uh-huh. so he was. He essentially, was a, he was a Jew who was yeah. kind of like a traitor. Okay. And so everyone hated him. Because he was the chosen people, but mm. chose an occupation with the enemy, mm, you know? And so yeah. everyone hated his guts. Yeah. And of course, Jesus calls him as one yeah. of his apostles yeah. because so, he knows his heart. You that's know? so funny how like Jesus, if you look back in all the stories, Jesus always picks that person. Mm-hmm. Like it's it's never the dude that's like on top. Like, oh, I'm yeah, I'm living life. Well, I'm, it's, I don't. it's the ones who have the willing heart, right? Yeah. He doesn't care about your occupation or what you've done that's yeah. bad. He cares where you're at right now in your yeah. heart. Are you willing to accept me? Yeah. And the problem with all the Pharisees at that time is they were living righteously mm. and trying to obey commandments, but their hearts were closed. Yeah. And so he couldn't work with them. Yeah. Even if you wanted to call him and choose him, he couldn't because they yeah. wouldn't accept him. Yeah. They wouldn't accept John the Baptist. They wouldn't accept him. Yeah. But he knew the hearts of these sinners mm-hmm. and he knew that they were open. Just like in your lowest point, you weren't yeah. living righteously per se. Yeah. But you had an open heart. And so yeah, God could work with you. You can work with that. Yeah. The humble. There's a scripture that talks about that, right? Oh, yeah. Like being broke. I mean, all the scripture basically talks about that. He wants you in your broken state. Broken heart and contrite spirit yeah. is all he asks. And yep. if we if we give him that, he can yep. work with us and yeah. he can change our lives. Beautiful. I Amazing. love it, man. Well, appreciate you, John. Yep. Um, that was John Q, our Hawaiian native, <laughs> Filipino, right? Yeah, yeah, Filipino. Yep. Filipino. Yep. My wife served in the Philippines, so we have a special place in our oh, heart right for the for the Filipino people. But uh, appreciate John coming on. Appreciate you, man, taking the time to share your testimony. 
I know that uh, there's a lot of people out there, members of the church or not, mm. that struggle gaining a testimony in yeah. the restored church, in the Book of Mormon, in Jesus Christ in general, and yeah. God in general. Yeah. And I love what you've taught us today about just having that humility, yeah. breaking down those walls of pride, having a, a humble heart, a contrite yeah. heart, and that's ultimately all God needs in order to work in your life yeah. and allow Him to change you and and make the most out of you. Like you said, make yeah. make make a much better version of yourself than mm -hmm. you could on your own. Yeah. So anyway, appreciate you coming on. No problem. John Q, a true millennial in the flesh. <laughs> uh, wish you all the best with your, your occupation, with your wife, your family. And uh, yeah, appreciate you. No problem. Thank Thanks, you. man. Thank you.